working on the island, I wanted to kind of let go and say, okay, I'm working together with other people and I want them to, how do you say, get lost in it, you know, and then me not control it so much. I just went through a common friend who's been working with me on the mangroves and then took him to his house, like, we need an electrician. And he was like, why, what do you want? This guy called Dodong who makes um, karaoke machines. I want, like, this mangrove to move up and down, you know, and it just started like that. But the thing with island, <laughs> we call it island technology, is just that, um, you know, uh, people do like trial and error, and it's not like the Dutch or the German way where it, it's got to last, you know, and it's got to work. <laughs> so we've still been upgrading it, <laughs> uh, but I think this is going to be the last uh, upgrade. Uh, it's been good to kind of let go of that and not be, it's not about this mangrove moving perfectly. It's about all of us coming together and obsessing about this machine for months. It's about a way of thinking, you know? Yeah. It's about, if we talk about all these issues, we need to so come together. It's not one person that's gonna save the world, yeah. let's say, you know? It's, it's about all of us. And so I think, I think I like that about the process of, it's not really, about this machine and this thing here. It's about all the conversations we've had and you know, we've been dreaming about other stuff and then we talk about other things that we could do together, you know, and things that everyone's putting input, like I could think of a machine that could do this and that. And, and we're, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Right, John, you're gonna be working on plastic machines? <laughs> so we have so much garbage on the island. So we're already doing research on plastic machines and you know what I mean? So those are the kinds of outputs. Maybe this machine won't work perfectly, but we're going to be working on some, some things that are going to be useful, you know, after this. So what you see here is, this is actually like an old uh, this is um, um, after the storm. We tried to do we did an experiment with a roof, like maybe like a green roof. So I recycled it um, in the last few months because I needed something to put water in to really start working on how do we work with tides and mangroves. And um, yeah, so I just ended up bringing all of it and just said, okay, you know what? Whatever we've used now, we're just gonna bring it. This is Panangatan Island, and um, um, it's a tiny island right next to Bantayan. I mean, you can just basically, you could swim this. Uh, but these people after the typhoon, there were, it used to be full of people after the typhoon. Of course, there was so much destroyed. You can see some of the cement houses destroyed, but um, it used to be mainly um, coconut and uh, nipa houses. And so those people have been moved, but these people refuse to leave this island. So they've been offered uh, housing already, government housing or Habitat for Humanity, but they really don't want to leave. I think there's still about 240, uh, like 30 households here, young kids also. But I, I chose to show this particular island here because even watching it myself, I realized that these are the coastal communities that we're talking about and then just kind of putting the camera on them and I'm just, we're just going in circles around it, like a ridiculous amount of times in, in different periods. And there's nothing really happening, but it makes you look at, you know what I mean? I mean, at least for me, I'm, you know? So this is a coastal community and these are, this is their reality. They are holding on to their life, you know, because this is their way of living. You know, they're, they're fishermen, uh, fisher folks, and they do seaweed farming. You know, if they're going to be moved inland, they don't have that anymore, you know. I 
think it's good to just have it continue and think about this up is to breathe and then down you kind of just it's a different thing when you're underwater it's like you're yeah this is Roji he's like a fish he's so beautiful but uh, and Lando is the man with the longer hair um, I've known La Lando for a long time or also in the first project in 2010 we were together but I just asked him like can we just go for a swim and I just want to get the breathing and so it's just breathing um, and it was funny because I was telling Lando like you know with this the sea I would like to really show like that you're breathing and then Lando was trying to do it and then he was saying to me I, I can't last for more than five minutes and I'm like but you're at sea all the time and he's like yeah I've been lost at sea but I don't move so I conserve energy so he just like stays underwater and doesn't do anything and so I had to first I was controlling it like I was like oh I want you to like do stuff and he was like no I can't do it and then I realized okay I have to let go and just have you under you know just do it and uh, yeah we did it different times of the year like we did it when there was bad weather and we did it when it was because the winds were shifting all the time these past few months yeah for some reason I always go back to a trip check because for me, it does create somehow more of a narrative. It always makes sense, you know what I mean? Together. And especially the sea, it's so hard to, I mean, the sea is just something really beautiful, so it's not, you know, when you're there in the water and then you hear and then the sound changes when you're under and then it's just so wide and then you just can't see infinite anymore, you know, it just all disappears. So I could have also done a projector and then video map. But we ended up using a floodlight and then using lenses and then concentrating it on the water because you're using lenses. So that's why you have the blue and the yellow. Yeah, there's something more natural about it or just it's really you really feel like you're working with light compared with a projector. This is kind of a continuation of that work because I was trying to explain to everyone why I wanted to move this mangrove up and down. It's because I had this idea that it would be so good to see this mangrove from this just completely abstract perspective. And then one night, finally, I like had a clear space. And then I was like, I found this, my old pin spotlight, and I put it there, and then I was like, okay, watch it. And I just like pulled up the mangrove, and everyone was like, and then everyone was like, we're all obsessed! Yeah, so that's when like, Joe and I just never stopped with like, finishing this thing.